Women play an integral role in research every day of the year. But for International Women's Day, we invite you behind the scenes to meet some of the women researchers working on the DAISY PCOS project. We also encourage you to take part in women's health research so that we can take things forward together. The aim of our study is to evaluate the metabolic risk of women with PCOS. The risk of those women to develop type 2 diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol levels, and we will do that by uh, measuring hormones in saliva, urine and blood. And why we're not measuring only in the blood? This is because we eliminate hormones in the saliva and the urine as well. Apart from that, we will also check on blood pressure, high weight, and we will also do a, a check on the body composition to measure how much fat mass and lean mass it's in your body. And this is important because um, it's not only how much, how much fat mass you have, but about how it is distributed. So when we look, for example, um, the body composition, we measure in the trunk area, which is the tummy area, and also the peripheral, the arms and legs. This is because we know that if there is a fat accumulation in the trunk, which is the tummy, the metabolic risk will be increased. The urine collection uh, is done on the day before the appointment. We send the urine bottles to the patients by post with the instructions on how to collect a 24-hour urine sample. As we are talking about every drop of urine in a 24-hour period. And then uh, once we have received the informed consent from the patient, we will proceed with the saliva sample, which is taken at the day of the appointment by a special saliva tube. It's like a straw that will collect 2 ml of saliva. And um, the blood, the DAISY PCOS, is what we call an observational study. So we are not giving the patient a medication. We are not doing any intervention. We will give the patient a um, sugary drink that contains 75 grams of glucose, but this is to perform what we call oral glucose tolerance test. We want to see how insulin, glucose, and other hormones that are not measured in a routine basis, they behave. So how do we do that? A cannula is inserted in the arm of the patient, and then blood is taken at the baseline point. Then the patient drinks the sugary drink, and then blood is taken every half an hour from that cannula until two hours. So blood will be taken at 0, 30, 60, 90, and 120 minutes. And then the visit is finished. So I work at the steroid metabolome analysis car at the University of Birmingham. Um, what we do in, with the DAISY PCOS is we're taking blood samples from our patients within clinics and then we're separating the red blood cells from the serum. Now it's a serum we're interested in in the laboratory. We can extract the hormones from that serum and run them by a technology called mass spectrometry. Now you can imagine a mass spectrometer as a molecular weighing machine and it allows us to look at what hormones are within the blood samples and how much each one of those hormones is in there. And then we can compare our populations with PCOS to people to women that don't have PCOS, and we're able to look at the differences in the hormone profile. So I work in the lab, and I do a variety of lab-based experiments, uh, which can range from sample processing, so collecting a patient's urine sample and then analyzing it, getting it ready to be run on a mass spectrometer, and then data analysis, looking at hormones in that specific urine, and the, working out the concentrations um, and I believe this is really important because it will help show the variance between different patients and then help towards develop targeted therapies. I'm a PhD student in the DAISY PCOS group. My research is lab-based and is focused on the association between PCOS and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I'm also involved in the collection of the samples that Thais mentioned, so urine, blood, 
and things along those lines. At the moment we're collecting samples um, to have as many as possible, to have a large batch in the freezer so we can analyse those at a later date. I hope that this study will achieve a better understanding of PCOS as a condition and also the metabolic implications that are associated with PCOS and a better understanding of women's health in general and the research surrounding women's health. So I hope that we can look at the, the health of women throughout their lifetime. So we're going to look at them from the cradle to the grave and we want to see what happens in um, hormones and what makes a woman go to have a regular reproductive life or to, to develop polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, every one in ten women across the globe have PCOS. We want to look at the differences between them and maybe identify treatment options. Targeted therapy and so that each woman is treated for her symptoms individually. Um, but if you do have PCOS and you are interested in being involved in women's health research, then we would really encourage you to sign up and join the study. The more women that we have of different ages, backgrounds, uh, goes to further the research and improve the outcomes of the study and hopefully help thousands of women.